Hey guys, how's it going? This is Josh with TechZone UK and today we're going to be doing a full review of some great software called CPU-Z. If you've never heard of CPU-Z before, it's basically an all-in-one application that shows some really in-depth detail about components inside your computer. Now this includes things like processor, motherboard and graphics information. So before we actually take a look at the software, we first need to download it. So you need to head over to their website and as always I'll put a link in the description below. And if you come up to the top right hand corner of their web page just here, you can see we have three different download options. The top one here is basically for an installation file that contains a 32-bit software, a uh, 32-bit version, sorry, and a 64-bit version of CPU-Z. And then here we have two other options, but these are basically no installation options meaning when you click on these files it basically gives you a .zip file uh, meaning that when you extract, extract that .zip file you can then simply run the software without an installation. Now the downside to this is that you have to download the one that matches the architecture of your PC so obviously if you're running a 64-bit uh, version you need to download the 64-bit version of CPU-Z and if you are running a 64-bit, 32-bit uh, ver uh, version of Windows sorry, you're going to need to download the 32-bit version so unlike the top version here we can select this top one and it doesn't matter if you're running a 32-bit or a 64-bit system. So for this video I'm going to be using the installation method, however if you're only going to be using this software once it's probably faster just to download the, the .zip file here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the top one here which is a setup in English and this is going to bring, up to, uh, uh, bring us to the download page here and uh, simply to start a download we're just going to hit download now. Now you can see in the bottom right hand corner it's starting to download the file. Now if you're running uh, a different web browser than I am, I'm running Google Chrome. If you're running something like Internet Explorer or uh, Firefox or something like that, your download might look um, a little bit different. However, as you can see, look, the uh, downloads are now uh, finished. Now what I've done here is I've just started the installation of the software by clicking the icon that we just downloaded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit run just here. Now if you're the same as me, you're probably going to get the UAC, uh, which is the user account control window comes up that so will say yes or no. Now for this you want to press yes. As I'm running Camtasia Studio to record this video, I don't think you can actually uh, see that message. However, if you click yes, this will then start the setup of CPU-Z. So on this setup, what we're going to do is we're going to hit next here. Uh, you can read the terms and conditions if you really want to. I'm just going to hit I accept here and hit next. Now here what we can do is keep it at this path if you really want to, it really doesn't matter where you install it but I mean if you've got a specific partition on your hard drive or a specific folder other than program files that you want to install software to, then what you can do is just hit this browse button just here and change the location of the file. Now the great thing about CPU-Z is that you need at least 1.6 megabytes of free disk space to install this software so it really doesn't take up that much space. So as you continue here what we're going to do is we're going to press next and uh, I don't want these toolbars so I'm just going to untick these two boxes here hit next here and I don't want to install hotspot shield so I'm going to untick this little tick box just here and hit next and this is basically saying do we want to install a startup menu folder um, I'm going to keep it at this um, as this is now I'm really not too fussed but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit next here and again I'm going to create a desktop icon and hit next and then finally to finish off the install I'm just going to hit install and there we go it's now installed. <laughs> so to finish this, this off, I'm just going to untick that box there and hit finish. Now as you can see, we've now finished the installation. You can see on my desktop, we now have a CPU-Z icon. So to start the software, what we're going to do is we're just going to double click on it. And if you're again the same as I am, you're probably going to get the UAC window come up. We're just going to click yes to this. And this is going to just quickly scan our system to tell the software what we're running, which will then soon after start the main software. Now in this video, I'm not going to go over all the features that this software gives you, meaning go over each different type of uh, information it actually gives you. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the, some of the common uh, bits that people are going to look at and tell you what each tab shows you. So as you can see, look, we're on the, the main CPU tab here. And again, this gives you so much information about your CPU-Z. Um, oh, CPU, sorry, not CPU-Z. Um, as you can see here, we've got the AMD FX8150. This is the CPU that I'm running. Um, and then we've got which socket the CPU is running as well. And which then we've got the core voltage. Now, what I really like about this bit is that it gives you a live uh, view on the voltage that your CPU is being run at. 
Now CPU uh, voltage is used uh, very often when overclocking because when you overclock a component basically what you're doing is just giving it more power and if you for some reason want to see if your CPU is being overclocked you can then see what uh, voltage it's being run at and then what compared to what the, the stock uh, level of the uh, voltage should be. Now as you can see look we've got some more information about the actual specification of my CPU here. Um, and then in the bottom right hand corner here we've got some clock speeds as well as the different sizes of uh, cache that's on my processor. Now I've got a layer 1, 2 and 3 uh, cache on my CPU. Um, and again here we've got what we do, what we have here is 8 cores and 8 threads. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click next tab which is caches. Which just gives us some more information about our level 1, 2 and 3 cache. Um, if you didn't know what cache is, it's basically like a really type, a really small version of RAM. But what it does is it sits on the processor, so when the processor needs to access data uh, really quickly, it's there for it to to access it without having to ask the RAM. So the next tab we've got here is motherboard. Again, this just gives us some more information uh, about the motherboard that I'm running, which is the M uh, M5A99X Evo motherboard, uh, which is an AMD uh, motherboard here. And again, it gives us some information about the PCI. Uh, slots on my motherboard you see it's a PCI Express link width is times 8 and the maximum support is times 16 under memory this is giving us some information on the type of memory that's installed on my processor on my motherboard side on the processor you can see we've got a total of 8 gigabytes of memory installed um, you can see the speed it's running at just here or the speed it's running at here sorry and you can see some other great information I'm not even going to pretend that I know which uh, what this means um, it looks a bit crazy to me, um, but I'm sure I'll have to find out. Now the next tab here is the SPD tab. Now you can see basically what this is memory slot selection here. And as you can see I've got it on slot 1 and if I go to slot 3 it won't have any information in either. Now my, this is because my PC has two or two uh, slots of memory in, uh, which is on slot 2 and slot 4. Each slot being a total of 4 gigabytes each, therefore giving me 8 gigs of RAM in total on my PC. So as you can see here, it gives us some information here. The max bandwidth of my memory is 10700, uh, which is in quite some fast um, memory here. And then down here we've got some more about the timing of my RAM, um, which you can go into more detail about. But again, it's a great feature is it gives us some voltage on each type of memory that's running out. And 1.5 volts for memory is a very, very, very um, common um, amount of power for memory anyway. And the last tab here we got is graphics, which is just going to give us some more information uh, about our graphics card. Now, I'm running an a uh, AMD HD 6950, so again, it's going to say the 6900 series card, but it's not going to give us that much information because the card is controlled by the Catalyst Control Center. Um, so basically meaning that um, it can't take this information, whereas if you did want to see it, you just have to right-click on your desktop and go to AMD Vision Engine Control Center. And the last tab is just about, and the great thing about this is what you can do is just save report, and you can save it to a text document here, in which this will save it to our desktop and give us a whole um, file on everything that's going on on this PC. So if you uh, want to know what someone's got, or you, they've got software installed, or you want a spec of their system, get them to send you that TXT file just there. So that's pretty much it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if it's been a bit long but I wanted to go over uh, each tab here. But if you did enjoy this video then uh, give it a like and if you've got any questions or feedback or anything like that then uh, drop a comment below. And best of all if you want to see more from my YouTube channel then please hit that subscribe button just down below this video. So thank you very much for watching guys, take care.